In this video, I'm going to make beautiful designs in hardwood using high voltage electricity. So stay tuned for more. The first thing we want to do is take a piece of hard, straight grain wood and make it uh, smooth on the sander before we do anything else. I know you've all heard it so many times that this is extremely, extremely dangerous. Be careful, wear your eye protection, yada, yada, yada. And you just kind of roll your eyes and say, yeah, whatever. Well, uh, this time, this really is extremely, extremely dangerous. Make every precaution you possibly can, and then don't do it anyway. This is for viewing purposes only. Don't do this. Don't kill yourself because of me. Um, I have a transformer, which is a microwave oven transformer in this box. Notice the words danger, high voltage. That implies that it's dangerous and has high voltage. I put it in this box so it can ventilate and keep me from arbitrarily touching it, but it's still dangerous. Somebody could poke their fingers in there or it could even arc out there and, and zap you. And then I have this plastic table on top of that. And I'm going to go with the no hands technique and operate it by this foot pedal to just keep away from this high voltage. And before I move on with this extremely, extremely, extremely dangerous operation, uh, there's things that will get you that you just may not consider. So let's talk about that for a minute. Your average run of the mill wire may be good to 100, 600 volts maybe, but certainly not uh, 1200 or more volts of a microwave oven transformer. So you could get zapped just by the wires, not just at the ends. And you, if you held your arm there, that would make your hairs of your arm stand up on end. Um, stay away from those wires. The other thing is when I first started doing this, I did it on the concrete floor and the solution would spill over onto the concrete floor and the voltage is high enough that it would cause a current to go through the third, third prong of the AC adapter, kicking off the GFCI outlet. So I'd have to go reset that numerous times. So that I picked it up off the ground to remove that hazard and that annoyance. Interestingly with this, it doesn't seem to matter how dirty or cruddy your um, connection points are. It's enough to arc through. So that's really not too much of a problem. And what I used to make it conduct is just maybe a teaspoon of baking soda to maybe a quart of water. Um, add it to warm water so it stirs up and mixes real well. Now some people could use salt, but when that gets hot and smokes, then you have chlorine gas. And that is extremely, extremely dangerous, so don't do that. And even with this stuff, it doesn't smell terribly good, so be sure you have good ventilation going. And I didn't have the camera rolling right when I wanted to, but you can see the detail that comes out here, and when we're done, we'll run that through water and a wire brush, and it'll look even more defined. So what I'll do is um, flip the board over and do it again for your benefit. So I'm going to apply some of this special sauce with a toothbrush. <coughs> a little tip here, always use somebody else's toothbrush. And just rub it on like that. Saturate it, but it doesn't need to be just, you know, running the muck all over the place. Soak it down a little more. And action. It's a really humid day today, which makes this process work even better and even be more extremely dangerous because the arcs can be bigger and your sweat has salt in it. So if you were to touch those two probes today, you could be dead by yesterday. Now we're starting to get a little stuff going on down here. And may need to move the probes a little bit to balance it out. I put a little more special sauce on there. Let's see what happens. And also move the probe position. starting to start from this side and they'll of course grow towards each other but sometimes I'll do some uh, 
unusual things like turn backwards um, instead of going in seemingly the straightest, straightest path. And that's the way we want it. We don't want to see uh, red hot lines that stay like that because it just makes a big burn mark. I'd rather have uh, basically little sparkles that look like a sparkler for 4th of July. And if there's too much going on in one spot or it gets too hot, I'll move the probe, sort of balance it out and control the movement a little bit. There's now a jet flying overhead to take in all this excitement. I guess the word's getting around. Um, I spritzed it with water and okay, we'll keep on going. And there we go. And there we go down there. Until it kind of dries up and stops. Well, maybe not. But you can see how hot it is, how dry it is around the black spots and stuff. We'll let that go. Okay, I moved the probes so we can control the flow of this uh, lightning tree-like structure a little bit and give it some power. And it seems like it takes a few minutes to maybe burn some of the solution off so there's more resistance making it be hotter to actually make the burn. And we're starting over here. You notice it came off the side of the handle. That's what the arcing does. be a good point to talk about just how dangerous this is. And once again. Look at that go. And the left side. Notice how sometimes it goes backwards. But ultimately, it tries to reach each other. When it gets to maybe six inches, it's possible that it could even arc across. Which is why you want to keep your body on the other side of town. Ooh, ah, hey, hey. Now it's getting faster and faster, and in a minute it's going to arc, and then we'll turn it off real quick. I think. Or maybe not. Actually, I think that's pretty good composition. So, part of the job is to know when to say when. I'm going to say when now, and then I will go in with a toothbrush and scrub on that, and you'll see the difference in detail. So it's in the sink now, and we'll watch as the see that black stuff just coming right off of there. And I said toothbrush, but we'll use a wire brush. a closer look at the detail after scrubbing it and I like to do both sides two reasons for that one reason if you're not happy how it turns out you have another side to try it on 
The second reason is it tends to dry the wood out more evenly so it doesn't warp or twist or cup. We don't want to warp or twist our cup, now do we? No, I didn't think so. Another media you can use is put a piece of, clamp a piece of plexiglass on top of the board while it's burning and you'll get a mirror image uh, burned into the plexiglass like I have on the lid to this transformer box here and then I've painted it uh, a couple of different colors with watercolors. That's the smooth side and that's the side that has the indentations.